Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Shannon White, and I am the Chief Operating Officer for Kika. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Kika's annual membership meeting. Today's meeting is being attended by our members, both in person and via Zoom. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule today to join us. I now have the pleasure of introducing to you your Kika Board of Directors. When introduced, if our directors would be so kind as to raise their hands and say hello. Chair Jerry McGee. Hello. <laughs> Very good following directions. <laughs> Vice Chair Beth Sampino. Treasurer Lisa Mascolo. Lisa, you get points today. Lisa just landed from a red eye from California. Secretary David DeStefano. Hello. Director Alex Fernandez. Hola. <laughs> director Kevin Donlin. And the developer director Amanda Mull. I'd also like to take a moment to welcome our directors elect who are here today. If you would each stand um, in order to be recognized in the room Paul Hennessy, Dwight Williams, and Sherry Gallagher. Please take a moment with me, yes, to congratulate our directors elect. We look forward to working with each of you. At this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to the chair of the board, Jerry McGee, in order to call the meeting to order. So let us begin. Let's call the meeting to order. <laughs> OK. Um, the first order of business is uh, to appoint our parliamentarian, uh, Tim Muller, who uh, will kindly serve to keep uh, all of us uh, in line with Robert's rules or whatever, so that this is official and cannot be contested later in a court of law. <laughs> all right. So thank you, Tim, for being here. And uh, I think that does that take care of all of that, Shannon? All right. Um, next item of business is the approval of the March 17th meeting uh, minutes, meeting minutes. So we need a vote and I need a motion for that. So, so moved. moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That motion carries. And that vote is approved. Um, all right. And now the uh, Shannon for the certification and quorum of the voting results. <coughs> sure. Thank you. In order to hold the meeting today, we needed 51% member participation by proxy. Proxies were assigned by 58.7% of our voters. Proxies are for attendance only and cannot be used to vote on any other matter at this meeting. Voting ended for the director election at 12 p.m. on Thursday, February the 15th. We had 58.8% of total votes cast in the director election. Votes were cast electronically, by mail, and by phone. The election was certified by our third party voting service, votenow.com. Per the board resolution passed on October 20th of 2023, the two candidates receiving the greatest number of votes in the election will serve a three year term. The candidate with the third highest votes will serve a two year term. Based on the vote of the membership, Paul Hennessy and Dwight Williams are now sentenced to three year terms. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Sherry, only two. Good behavior. At the conclusion of the annual meeting, our three directors completing their service will step down from the board and our directors elect will be seated. As many of you know, achieving quorum is often difficult for us. We finally achieved quorum on the Monday evening prior to the close of the election. Aside from the many reminders we send to all of you to vote in the election, we also offer a $500 award. The name is randomly selected from those who participate, and it's selected by our third party voting service. I'm pleased to announce that this year's winner is Dr. and Mrs. Richard Blake Dennis, owners of 4374 in Windswept. By any chance, are Dr. and Mrs. Dennis here today? Okay, then the staff will reach out to them and let them know the good news. Checks already cut. Thank you to everyone who participated in voting in this year's election. One other business item is related to the number required for a petition of the membership to compel a referendum on a specific board action. The board aligned this number with our voting numbers. For our members present, the required petition number would be similar to the voting process you're already familiar with. For record, the total number of base votes from this year's director election was 9,500. 
this number will be in effect until next year's annual meeting or until a new date of record is pulled. Now I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Jerry for his chair report. Many of you don't know, but I spent a lot of my life in Hollywood working in the movie business. And there's a wonderful story about the head of Paramount Studios who was asked to, to leave and they had a big party for him and he left. But the next day he came back because he'd forgotten something in his office. He picked it up and he was walking out the door and the new chair looked at him and said, ah, Gannis, forgotten but not gone. <laughs> and so it goes with the chair and myself. Soon I will be gone and unrecognizable, enjoying this wonderful, wonderful island. I want to say a few things about uh, that. The 106 slide presentation I put, I'll, I'll put that on the side, and because uh, I know you can't wait to, uh, to move on. I'd like to thank a, a lot of people who are maybe online, uh, sitting in the audience, for all the contributions that they make. It takes a village, as Hillary Clinton said, to, you know, to get a lot of this done. It's not one individual board member that uh, can stand up and say, I did that. It's, um, it's a community effort, and all of you contribute in very different ways. Sometimes it's an email that we get that sparks us to do something. Sometimes it's a committee that meets and drafts new bylaws. Brad McElvain is an example of a guy who was on the board and then he uh, stayed on and with the governance committee and, and did a good job rallying everybody. But all the people on that committee contributed well as well as did the board. So I think we have to be mindful of the fact that everyone here has the best interests of Kiowa in their mind. That's certainly what I've tried to do. But the biggest thing that I challenged myself was doing was recognizing our staff. We have the best group of people you can not imagine. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you how many times Shannon talked me off the ledge. And, uh, you know, and, and all of the staff contributed. So thank you to them. They are the ones that operate this day to day. And the board, hopefully, is a strategic advisory committee that helps them do their job better. So I'm going to stop there because no one wants uh, X chair to go on and on. And we'll move on to the, to the as Alex likes to say, the money. And um, so, Lisa, if you okay. would please give your report. Uh, so this is the official treasurer's report for the last board year. Um, the Finance Committee is, um, I think, a, was a great committee over the course of the last year. Um, I'm sad that the Finance Committee, regardless of who is the next treasurer, the Finance Committee is losing the service of three um, really dedicated folks, uh, Jim DeLayla, Paul Hennessy, and Jeff Porter. Obviously, we're not losing Paul totally because Paul's on the board, um, but I really need to thank um, Jeff and Jim for their contributions. The entire Finance Committee made some great contributions. We'll take a look at some of those accomplishments over the course of the year. Um, but those guys did a great job, and I really appreciate their, their time and their effort. Um, just a couple of accomplishments of that finance committee. Uh, and my, my view on the finance committee is that it was a very collaborative effort. We, had, we generally had some pretty spirited conversation. Um, and, then, and we didn't always all agree on everything, but ultimately when we decided how we were moving forward, we all stacked hands and that's how we moved forward. A um, couple of important accomplishments from the, uh, over the course of the year. As you all know from your individual personal experience, uh, insurance is a big deal. Um, and our, uh, our broker, USI, uh, we work with USI over the course of the year uh, to make sure that we had the best policies in place. Our policy year generally is um, May through April. So the next Finance Committee will certainly be taking that up. Overall, we had a 26% year-on-year increase. I don't know if that's in line um, with what you all are experiencing. The biggest single increase was with respect to property tax and that was about 33%. Um, we did select a new auditor, uh, an auditor called Forvis. They've done a really nice job. Um, our two uh, primary participants, if anybody tuned into the last uh, finance committee meeting, Sabrina Preston and Gray Worth. Gray Worth. Um, I think they're, they spent a lot of time immersed with Dale and the team actually understanding our numbers um, and ultimately produced our audited financials, which the board agreed to uh, at the last meeting. 
Um, we also transitioned to a new investment advisor, Morgan Stanley Cook Street, um, and I think that that transition has gone very well. One of the things we're working on the uh, finance committee and then transitioning to the new finance committee is a strategy with respect to investing our cash. Um, from a budget process perspective, I think our budget process has gotten better and better every year. There's more transparency. Um, I'm interested on in side comments from people about, we, always, we go back and forth as to how much we should put online, how little, is it confusing? And I think over the course of last year, we've done a good job to try and streamline and put out even more information. So I think our, our public facing publications, if you will, are pretty transparent. Um, our overall results for the year are pretty strong, as you can see. Um, I think the Dale and his team are great stewards of your money. And I look forward to, again, the next finance committee continuing that tradition. We have revised the investment policy statement and basically what that allows our advisors to do with notification to the finance committee and the board is to go up to 50% of our investments in equity. An important change that happened over the course of the year, and this is another good example of collaboration, the HR committee asked the finance committee to take a look at what our approach was for health insurance, and ultimately the finance committee recommended to the board that we take on a self-insurance uh, approach for our employee health care. I think that's ultimately going to pay dividends. We'll certainly see over the course of the next couple of years. And we ended 2023 with no uh, outstanding collections. Overall, I would say that our balance sheet is healthy. We have a very stable financial uh, organization, and I'm, again, pleased with the work that Dale and the team have done. Um, we have, uh, one of the things we're gonna focus on, the Finance Committee going forward is gonna focus on, um, is an investment policy statement for our cash. Um, how much cash should we have and where should we have it? So that's a, that is a 2024 uh, task for the Finance Committee. Uh, an ongoing question near and dear to Paul Hennessy's heart is with respect to reserve funding. Um, and we've had this conversation, what percentage of our, uh, of our assets do we want covered? Right now we're at about 60% of our assets covered with what is in the MR&R fund. And that's going to be an ongoing conversation. I think it's a legitimate, robust conversation to have. And we have uh, the uh, reserve study coming at the end of March. Um, from an overall budget perspective, the board approved an operating fund uh, deficit of $608,000. Um, and we're slated to have a reserve fund uh, surplus of about $3 million at the end of the year. Um, you all are probably aware that the CAPE comes online, so overall we expect our contribution to reserves uh, over the course of the year to be about $4 million, which is a pretty healthy number. It's another thing we need to think about, and when you see those future risks that are under consideration, we need to be really thinking strategically, the next finance committee does, uh, thinking strategically about our sources of revenue. And our 2024 priorities, regardless again of who's the treasurer and who's, who else is on the finance committee, uh, there are some matters that we want to take a look at in the financial controls manual. Um, as I said, we're looking at the M, uh, reserve fund policy statement. We're gonna look at our balances with respect to cash and what we want to do with our cash, um, and the insurance landscape is continuing to change, so that's an important topic for the Finance Committee. And that, Mr. Chair, is the Finance Committee's report, the Treasurer's <coughs> report. Uh, I would make one other point, sorry. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, we will have, as I noted, three open positions for the Finance Committee. Um, whoever the next chair of the, uh, of the committee is will go out to the community, hopefully tomorrow and solicit for three new members. Uh, those of you who have interest and have uh, experiential educational background in finance will identify what those requirements are and what we would like to have on the Finance Committee, so please, if you're interested. It's a fair amount of work, as the current members will tell you, uh, and we're interested in having um, three additional members on the committee who are committed to the finances of the island. Thank you, Lisa, appreciate that, good report. Um, all right, uh, Kevin Donlin will now uh, give us a report on the Governance uh, Task Force. Um, thank you, Jerry. Um, the Governance Task Force has been meeting regu regularly for the last few months. Um, it's been given the mandate by the Kika Board to review the General Covenants and the Kika Covenants and to re recommend improvements to those. 
Um, the task force is um, comprised of uh, Amanda Mole on the board and Paul Hennessy, who's joining the board, as well as several volunteers, Beverly Fierro, Kelly Sash, Andy Capelli, and Glenn Thompson. Um, while the task force has identified many areas of improvement within the General and Kika Covenants, um, we focused on a subset of improvements specifically in the Kika Covenants to address immediately. We feel like these are um, most important to our members. Um, we, we did discuss a complete rewrite of either document, but decided to focus on a smaller group of issues that we feel are most important to members and to address those as soon as possible. Um, one thing I want to point out that everyone should understand that a change to the general covenants is very difficult. Um, it requires written signatures from approximately 50 or over 50% of the owners at a specific point in time. It's a cumbersome for, uh, it's very cumbersome for a community of our size and, and we felt that we didn't want to, while trying to achieve that, delay other important issues for the uh, membership. So we have a draft recommendation that we plan to discuss with the community in the coming months. Uh, it includes four specific areas of improvement in the Kika covenants. Um, one, uh, elimination of the Kiwa partner's right to appoint a seat on the Kika board. Um, two, enhancement of Kika's authority and flexibility to establish an island-wide architectural control function. Um, three, creation of additional enforcement mechanisms and an appeals process related to Kika's rules and regulations. And four, several other updates to the document that we believe will be non-controversial. Uh, for example, um, everywhere it refers to County of Charleston, we'll change that to Town of uh, Kiwa Island. Um, the task force is planning a community meeting here in the coming months to, so to solicit everyone's feedback. Um, we hope that the Kika board will approve everything that we've recommended, uh, the community to be the community will be happy with it, and in the coming months, we'll um, vote to submit it to a vote to the members in early fall. Um, a successful outcome in an initial vote will require the participation of 60% of our members to achieve quorum. Keep in mind that in our last election, we only got to 58. Um, and then if we don't achieve 60% quorum in that election, we could run a second election of which we'd be required to have 50% of members participate. And then any of these items would be passed. We're gonna ask for them to be voted separately and they would be passed if we re received a majority of that quorum. Mr. Chairman. All right, Chairman, thank you very, very much. Um, Shannon, you're up. Good morning again. Uh, so it's my time to brag on the staff and um, what we accomplished in 2023. So um, as you read in our recently released 2023 annual report, we are an association of 9,264 members. Approximately 80 to 85% of our membership is part-time. We welcomed 493 new members last year. Isn't that crazy? And our membership is from a wide variety of locations to include 47 of the 50 United States and seven countries excluding the United States. As an association, we strive to meet the needs of our large membership. Our charge is to work to preserve and enhance both the quality of life and the property values of our membership. We're also committed to preserving the uniqueness of this community and being stewards of all its resources. An obvious way to meet our obligations is through the care of the physical property, the properties held in common for all of you. In 2023, we completed numerous infrastructure-related projects to include the following. $1.1 million in drainage projects, including improvements to Surf Watch Road, Greensward Road, Ocean Green, and the neighborhood of Inlet Cove. We installed an electronic gate system for the canvas back drainage basin. I know that's not interesting, but it really is. <laughs> this is why. It is significant because now the two largest drainage basins on the island, which control 70% of our stormwater, can be operated electronically, including from off island, so that we can better manage the system with low tides. We paved six additional residential roadways. We widened the Alley of Oaks Leisure Trail to 10 feet, right, David? We widened that. And as well, we widened the associated walk bridge. We took ownership and redecked the walk bridge from Tennis Club to Maritime. We repaved all poor and fair rated leisure trails around the island, as well as we improved trail and roadway transitions in the East Beach area. And we're still working on those. We did some more this spring. 
We added a new kayak launch at Eagle Point, and we replaced the existing one at Cinder Creek. And we did our longest vehicular bridge. We redecked the Summer Islands Bridge. That is a project unto itself. So this was just to name a few. In 2024, here's some of what we look forward to completing for the benefit of the island. We're continuing our commitment to improving our drainage infrastructure. We've already been working this year on Rets Bluff Road, Airy Hall, and Burroughs Hall. We're gonna be improving the drainage related to the intersection. Hold on, governors at Trumpet Creeper. <laughs> <sighs> By adding additional drainage infrastructure into this intersection. We'll be repaving an additional $2 million in roads to support the Kika Board's commitment that our roads be in excellent or good condition on the island. We're gonna complete the bank stabilization in Inlet Cove's channel, and we'll redeck our very last vehicular bridge, a small vehicular bridge at Falcon Point. We're also improving our boardwalks. In the member survey, boardwalks were high use, right? I mean, who wouldn't wanna go out there? We currently have four boardwalks, under contract for completion before the end of the summer. Two will be done before Easter, maybe. Um, boardwalks 9, 14, 16, and 32. We are also adding an additional five shower stations at 29, 30, 31, 33, and 34. The showers are underway now and will be ready by Easter weekend. You all shared with us that you wanted more water on more boardwalks. So in the past year, we will have taken our boardwalks from 54% with water to 88% with water. Our land and lakes team continues to care for the 60 miles of roads, the 19 miles of leisure trails, the 118 cul-de-sacs, and 122 ponds. Our teams were also there to manage the cleanup from two storms last year. As usual, our teams supported by our emergency contractors, jump right in after a storm. Many of you sent compliments to our team related to their storm-related cleanup work, and we thank you for recognizing them. Construction continues to be brisk here on the island, and our livability team works to manage and oversee all of this activity. Ed's in the back, he's nodding, I can see him. Today, we are at 164 open new home construction permits on the island. While that's not as high as last year when I told you there were 200 open, it is still higher than we generally experienced five to 10 years ago. In 2023, our livability team oversaw almost 3,200 encroachment permits for all types of construction around the island. That's an 8% increase over what they did last year. All of this activity keeps our security teams busy. Beginning with access control to the island, which is our primary function, 2.27 million cars pass through the main gate in 2023. 6.5% increase over the previous year. During the year, our security team issued over 58,000 passes and decals to commercial contractors and employees plus an additional 87,000 passes to members, member guests, renters, day visitors, and special events. We kept them busy. Security continued their focus, though, on enforcement. In 2023, a focus was placed on our patrol team, developing a dedicated patrol team supplemented by gate officers. One of our experienced security officers was promoted to patrol supervisor to oversee this team. We increased to three full-time dedicated patrol officers in 23. We increased training to all the officers who serve in patrol positions. We added bike patrol, and we focused on both our education and enforcement across the island. This year in 2024, we've increased to five full-time patrol officers. We made our patrol vehicles more visible for you, so you will see our team in the field if you need help or have a question. We continue to work closely with our partners with Charleston County Sheriff's Office 
and our public safety and security partners with the town of Kiowa Island and Kiowa Island Golf Resort. We hope that you are noticing the focus that we are placing on our security team as enforcement is an area the membership specifically said that we can improve in. Of course, our Sandcastle staff loves to welcome you here to the Sandcastle. And in 2023, they welcomed 97,000 check-ins to the Sandcastle facility. I know, right? It's a lot. Um, all kinds of reasons, too. Fitness, pools, clubs and groups, meetings, Kika-sponsored events, private events. And last year, we partnered with POPs for the first time, helping to bring our members some really great events. Through all of this, our communications team was talking with all of you. So they conducted the biannual survey and 3,300 of you participated in that. And that was fantastic. It provides the association important information on what we are doing well, what we can improve on, and what you see as our priorities. And literally every comment was read. We redesigned the weekly email newsletter in order to both improve engagement and readability, and you all responded favorably to these changes. Do you know that we emailed you 106 times last year? We did. We sent out 51 weekly email newsletters. We skipped Christmas week. 435 Facebook posts, 55 Instagram posts, 39 YouTube videos, and our website had 159,000 identified users last year. Okay, our website. I'm just gonna tell you all. The number one thing on our website is still in fact the beach cam. <laughs> Mounted right here on this veranda so that you can watch the beach any time you want, no matter where you are. So if you are living in Montana and you need to see a beach because it's snowing, we're there for you. And so it was still the number one thing on our website with 99,000 views last year. It topped our homepage, which was 90,000 views. That beach cam, if the beach cam ever goes down, our communications team hears it immediately. Of course, as a service organization, our staff members are critical to our success. In 2023, we had 108 full-time positions across Kika. While they will hate that I'm about to point them out, standing at the back of the room or sitting at the back of the room is your staff leadership team, all of your department directors from the company. If you would take a moment. Thank you. We have such a strong and talented staff leadership team. It is my privilege to work with each of them. Our staff is committed to the service of our membership. In 2024, we are refocusing all of our staff on this core mission of Kika, as it is the heart of what we do. Finally, in my role as COO, I have the privilege of working with many of our company's volunteers, including our board members who are sitting here. But in addition to our board members, we have so many members who offer their time and talents to Kika in lots of ways. To include our finance committee, HR committee, board outreach, security, governance task force, Sandcastle user group, joint ARB task force, communications task force, amenities task force, our Our World volunteers, ah, there's one in the front, Garden Club volunteers who assist us in the greenhouse with countless hours and helping us propagate plants to put in the landscape beds, our Sandcastle Library volunteers, and the POPs board. We would like to thank all of our volunteers for their time, their dedication, and their service to our community. In 2024, we'll continue to work to serve our membership by continuing to preserve and enhance all that is special about this amazing place. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon. It's an excellent, uh, excellent report. Um, all right. Uh, now, those of us who are about to be booted out the door have a few final 
uh, thoughts for you, starting with uh, my partner in crime, Beth Sampino. Thank you, Jerry. Good morning, everyone, and what a beautiful morning it is. <laughs> Accomplishments are never really the result of any one individual. They take time to achieve and always result from people working together in a collegial manner. It's no different for Kika. Our accomplishments are the direct result of how well the board, the community, and the Kika staff work together. Imagine how our accomplishments would multiply if our interactions improved, both face-to-face -face and on social media. It's time for everyone to let go of the past, commit to unity and civility, and give each other the benefit of the doubt. This is really the only way that Kika is going to continue to grow and prosper. We have elected three new members to the board. Over the past month, I've watched the interaction, and I am filled with hope. There is a demonstrated desire to get started, an ability to listen and respect each other's perspective, seek solutions, and compromise through discussion. We're lucky to have a very strong community with active participation from our members. Our opportunity lies in improving that partnership and continuing to leverage the diverse knowledge embedded in our community. For this to happen, Everyone must commit to better dialogue, less confrontation, and building trust. We're blessed with an extraordinary, dedicated Kika staff of over 100 individuals. They come to work every day and each day committed to satisfying the needs of the community and work tirelessly for the betterment of the island. Never give up striving for continuous improvement searching for creative solutions, and bringing alternatives to the forefront. We appreciate all your efforts. And as you know, I spent four years on the HR committee and worked closely with Sarah Bond, our director of HR. In my career, I have worked with HR professionals, and I can honestly say that Sarah is one of the best. She is versed in industry knowledge, drives for solutions, and executes with the best of them. But most importantly, she will always make the right decision, even if it's difficult. Sarah, thank you for everything you've accomplished and for all the support you've given me. We're in good hands with Sarah. And of course, I wish to thank Shannon for her never-ending support. She works tirelessly with a smile on her face, often 24 by 7. Her institutional knowledge of all things Kiowa provides continuous education to the board and keeps us out of trouble most of the time. Her leadership clearly inspires loyalty of her employees, but it's Shannon's moral compass that I most admire. She never wavers and always takes the high road. This has served the board, the community, and the staff well. Shannon, I appreciate you and thank you for your perseverance, dedication, and friendship over the last four years. To the board, the community, and the Kika staff, I encourage you to work together and harness the opportunity to take us forward and make Kika better. And finally, thank you to my husband and my family for their constant support and patience over the past four years. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Alex? Well, good morning. Good morning. Well, it's good. Well, how time flies when you're having a good time. It just seems like yesterday when I was telling you after being elected to the board that I would hear my mother May she rest in peace, saying, Alex, what did you get into? Well, let me, take a let me take a few minutes to tell you what I got into. The annual Kika 990 report to the IRS states that directors spend an average of two hours per week on Kika business. And if we can keep a secret so I don't go to jail or pay a fine, that was a big lie. 
but that was not the problem. I always intended to spend as much time as required to get the job done. To me, to get the job done was to comply with the promise before elected, to do as much as possible in making Kika more transparent and with much more disclosure. So let me mention a few. Auditors. Kika had the same auditors that we were appointed by the developer for 19 years. I believe that a new set of eyes was needed. And the auditing role was put out to bid. Not without much pushback, but we did appoint new auditors. The investment manager. Kika today has over $15 million in invested funds. And we need the best, and one without any conflict of interest. Oh yes, without any conflict of interest. This role was put also out to bid, and I'm pleased that we have one of the best investment management firms now. Kika did not have a conflict of interest policy. Today, all directors, the COO, committee, and task members are required to sign a conflict of interest statement. Yes, this is a step forward, but remember that these statements are on an honor system. Financial reporting on Kika results was a one-page report. Today, a detailed executive summary, as well as an explanation of how and where your assessments are spent is done on a timely quarterly basis. Thank you, Dale, for that. Then we found that we had been over 10 years paying the ARB fees that amounted to over $500,000 to prepare us to take over the ARB duties. Kika is a very slow learner. We no longer pay those fees. The purpose of the fees that all contractors, service companies, and delivery trucks pay when they go through the front gate is to pay for the wear and tear on our roads. The majority of these funds were going to Kika general revenue account. That has changed now, and 85% of all these funds go to the reserve account. In 2024, that will amount to $2.8 million. Before this change in 2022, the reserve account was credited with only $500,000. Having a 30, 40 minute board meeting was normal practice, while having private meetings behind closed doors lasted two, three, four hours. That's now in the past due to the changes in our bylaws. Our thanks to Brad McElbain and the Governance Committee Group for a job well done in revisions to our bylaws. A lot has been done to bring more transparency and disclosure to Kika. My thanks to the board for moving in that direction. Now, what did I not expect in my three years? I did not expect to be in the minority. Do you know what it's like to be in a minority for three years? Some didn't like the minority group. Flipped over to the majority. They liked it so much they extended themselves a year. I didn't even expect to be incorporated in so many different groups. The haters, the constant complainers, the malcontents, and the grouchy old men. All prestigious groups of our community. And the most recent one by a community member stating, Fernandez is a loud oppositionist defending the rights of the people. That one I'm really proud of. I didn't expect materials and information to be beheld from me as your treasurer and board member. You may recall the famous security arrangement with Kasik. Management and the majority of the board did not want the contract reviewed and assured us that this would, take a, this would be a money-making activity. They assured us that Kika would make $25,000 profit, but the final result showed a $32,000 loss in benefit of, guess who? The partners. You may also remember the expansion and illegal appointment of two board members. Materials have still not been released in this serious community dividing issue. Four board members and two illegally appointed board members received legal recommendations on the appointments and withheld this information from three board members. Instead, they hired another lawyer to defend their position, costing thousands of dollars to Kika. 
I believe it's an attempt to cover up a very poor decision. Hopefully, this new board will want to come clean and release all the documents related to this issue. And please, don't tell me. Leave it alone, Alex. Why do you want to go to the past? First, this community needs to learn from the past so it does not happen again. And we can learn to be better. And certainly, those responsible for behaving in a selfish manner should be clearly identified. I also didn't expect to be told by a high executive of the resort that I was a problem. I insist that only Kika, that not only Kika, invest in new signage through our community, but also all those agreed to do so. Kika has invested over a million dollars in new signage, while the resort and the partners have not replaced a single sign. Why? The ARB led the initiative to upgrade signage, but it has not enforced their policy at all. You would ask why. I've also insisted that we change the present policy that allow Governor's Club members that live outside the gate to flow freely through our gate. They use our roads and should contribute to the wear and tear. As where the written agreement or board action is that allows for this to happen. This board has not wanted to deal with this issue. You can understand why none of my family members will ever get a job at the resort, nor will I ever get a free Keyway Club membership. There are no doubts that there have been improvements in our operating side. But let me make a couple, if I may, recommendations to the new board. First, ask questions. And after you ask, ask the same question in a different manner. You may be surprised to get a different answer. Insist on thinking out of the box. Do not accept, we've always been doing it this way. Insist on more and better systems to manage our operations. In 2024, Kika revenues will exceed $24 million. And we still have at our front gate our security people with a car counter in their hand counting how many vehicles go through the gate. Yes, a, cow, a car counter held behind their back all away from being seen. Blowing leaves into our driveway and us blowing them back on the road is not very productive. There is equipment today to pick up debris and help not clog our drainage system, which causes flooding of our roads. Cost of unclogging is high. These are just three, but I do have a long list. Let me close. I know that I have done things better or differently. I have no doubts about that. I hope you understand that I am not perfect. Now, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you for your support during these three years. It has been an honor to represent all of you, and it has been my privilege to represent the minority. Thank you. My wife said, what do you want to say today to everybody? Um, and I said, I don't know. I'm conflicted. I can call up a lot of things that happened and recall all of those things and um, make people feel badly. Or I can leave on a high note and one with hope. We can't go back, but we can go forward. And that is what I would like to leave you with today. You heard some very, very positive reports from our COO, from uh, board members, uh, and you've certainly heard what the staff has done to make this wonderful place enjoyable for all of us. We sure do lose sight of how fabulous this place is. It's real easy to dig down into the negativity and to concentrate on only that. But this isn't a broken, terrible, corrupt place. This is a paradise. The whole world would love to be able to spend a week here. 
And we're lucky that we're privileged enough and we've had enough successes in our life to be able to enjoy this. So I urge you all to really understand that those of us who stand up here and take the shots and the, uh, you know, and the, the grimaces and, and the barbs that we get, we're doing this on a volunteer basis. I'm only standing here today because my wife helped me get through one of the most difficult times in my life. I lost my 33-year-old son this year. It was a horrible tragedy and one which is forever going to leave a giant hole in me. But I, I felt so committed to what I was doing here and she and I agreed that I would see this out. And the reason I see it out is because all of you, you're all successful, wonderful people. And if we can only turn ourselves to the positive, then I believe that we will make progress. This board, the new board, I agree. I'm so encouraged by you know, what I've heard and the dialogue uh, that I've uh, been privy to. And I think we're going to have a, a really great board going forward, and it will make a lot of progress. We have to, we have to realize Kika is changing a lot. There is a gigantic amount of uh, construction that's going to happen. The we don't, we, we're not even, we're talking about it, but the impact of it is going to be very challenging for all of us and for this board. And the issues that are gonna come up are going to be very tough to wrestle with. So we gotta work with the town. We have to, you know, form stronger links and be able to work together. We have to work with the conservancy because above all, keeping this place as welcoming to nature and as pristine a place as possible, given the development pressures that we have, uh, is gonna be a challenge. So I, I, I urge all of you, you new board members, um, thank you for volunteering to step up and do this. Uh, I've been here for four years, I can't believe it. Um, and even though I'm illegally on the board, according to somebody, uh, I, uh, I will leave you with a smile with openness, with encouragement, and if you see me, just walk by and say, I think I used to know him. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. So as you've heard from each of our outgoing directors, this completes their years of service for Kika. Board service is a big time commitment and it often takes a lot of work to become familiar with the various topics which come before the board today. Today, 10 years of combined experience leaves the Kika board. We have a small token of appreciation for each of our departing directors, but first, please join me once again in thanking our outgoing directors. policy, I'd like to say that this is a gigantic amount of money that's coming out of the treasury. <laughs> it's a one, it's a one way ticket for me, you know, so I have no problem. With it. It, is not, it is not a one way ticket. It is not a million dollar check. It is not a club membership. It is a token gift of our appreciation. Wow. All right. Onward. Oh, we're going to dinner tonight, honey. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Gloria, you don't have to cook tonight. You're welcome. <laughs> Today, uh, member comments is the next section of this meeting, and they will be received live here in the room and via Zoom. All comments are considered advisory in nature to the Board of Directors. We will start with comments in the room first. If you have a comment to make in the room, please raise your hand. Hayes is there and he's gonna bring a mic to you so that you can be heard in the room and online. If you are joining us today via Zoom, please raise your hand on Zoom. My executive assistant, Ellen, is handling our participants via Zoom today and she will call on you by name to make your comments. For the record, please state your name and Kiowa property address. That will make it so much easier for the person transcribing this. Um, so that we may hear from as many members as possible, please try to keep your comments brief. Are there any comments today in the room? Please raise your hand. Hayes is coming your way. Okay. 
Maura McIlvain, 146 Blue Heron Pond Road. Two things. Um, I appreciated the report from the task force, Kevin. I would commend to your consideration for the next annual meeting, maybe having a short report from every standing task force and committee. We don't have mm -hmm. that often enough. And I know we've talked about having it more regularly or at least publishing it, but I think when you have the opportunity and have so many more guests than the usual monthly board meeting, it might be a good opportunity to yeah. lay out briefly what everyone's working on, what the status is of maybe some ongoing projects or, or initiatives they're looking at. Sure, thank that's, you. That's question or issue number one. Number two, I would like to thank the outgoing board members, but I'd also like to thank Tammy, Danny, and Gloria because this is not a solo job, I can tell you, so. Yes, ma'am. Thank you to the spouses of our board members. Anyone else in the room? Quiet in the room today. Ellen, do you have comments online right now? We do not have any online comments. Wow. Merciful. Easy. Merciful heavens. <laughs> They're all on the beach. Jerry, this is your gift as outgoing chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> you can go ahead. All right, uh, Alex, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> it is my pleasure as my last uh, motion as a board member to move to adjourn. A second? Second. Second. All in favor? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. We would ask that the audience remain in place, please. Um, just for another few minutes, the Kika board is going to move immediately into the first meeting of our new board so that they may elect their board officer positions and handle one other business items. For Jerry and Beth and Alex, look at that. Man, did they get out of their seats fast. This officially completes your board service, and we ask that our directors, now not directors elect, step forward. Pick your favorite chair. Sure. Well, in as much as right now we don't have a chair or vice chair, so as secretary, I will call this meeting to order. Uh, first, member comments on agenda items. He's right behind you, Judy. Oh, oh sure. sure. Yeah, you can. If you want. Either way. Yeah, turn around, Judy. No, she's fine. She, she, she's, she's just fine. To, she's just fine. I just wanted to come up here rather than try to use the handheld mic. Uh, I'm Judy O'Brien, 243 Seamarsh Drive. Um, I thought last night as I was trying to fall asleep that I was going to make a comment at today's board, and it has frightened me ever since <laughs> to stand in front of you all and have something to say. But I feel strongly that this is a chance for a new beginning. And I think most people, maybe all in the community, want to see the acrimony and the, um, la and the hostility that we've seen from time to time with the past board eliminated and to move into a period of courtesy and goodwill and appreciation of the 
people that have, uh, we have on the board. I think the chair is a very important position. And I would say that the chair needs to play a big role in creating collegiality among the board. Take the time to get to know the other board members, the ones that you might not know so well. Find out what makes them tick and what their interests are and help the other board members, all board members, to get to know each other on a personal basis so that the idea that uh, some people are evil or have uh, bad motivations, that they operate from some uh, point of view that is contrary to the best interests of Kiowa, some of, those, some of that spirit has uh, been evident during the past couple of years. And I just urge you to get beyond that. And I think one way that you could do that and it would be a classy and high, high, very nice thing to do, would be that we're gonna have the vote for chair. I predict that it will be a split vote. I think there'll be two candidates, and I think that they'll get some votes each, but not, not all. And I would urge that those who are voting in the minority for the chair cast their votes for the majority. So after the vote is taken, to say to the board, I would like to withdraw my vote and move that the vote for chair be unanimous. I think that would be a wonderful way to start the year by showing unity and support for the chair. And I suspect that many in the audience agree with me. I hope they might even nod their heads to show <laughs> because I really know that it would be a difficult move for some of you but it would be an important move for all of you. So thank you for your time and for your service and congratulations to the new board members. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Uh, the next item on the agenda is to vote for board officers. Are there other comments? Any, oh, any other comments? Or online. Anybody online, Ellen? No. no. The order uh, that we're going to elect officers will be chair first, then vice chair, then treasurer, then secretary. Uh, basically, a board member can nominate themselves. If someone else makes a nomination, it would be seconded. Then there'll be discussion for those who want to discuss it at all. Then there'll be a vote. Once the new chair is elected, that chair will take over this meeting uh, and, and, and finish the meeting for vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. So uh, any nominations for chair? I'd like to nominate Kevin. I'd second. Uh, I'd like to nominate David DiStefano. I'll second. So the process is that um, if there's two or more nominations, whoever was nominated first will get, will vote, whoever wants to vote for that person. So all in favor of Kevin. Can we have some discussion, please? Oh, yes. I forgot about that. I've nominated David DiStefano for the chair because he has a priceless five years of experience on this board full of uh, history and service. He's a full-time resident of the island. He'll be here for emergencies for every meeting we have when we need him. He's involved in island activities and has a firm grasp on Kiowa issues and member concerns. Kika members have expressed their desire for non-club directors and officers, and I can understand why we need a diverse group to represent the entire island. Dave has successfully managed more committees and task forces than, than I can count, um, but he has always done it with a moderate and professional temperament. He's been a huge support to me and other women who have been courageous and crazy enough to put our hats in this ring, and he will lead the island towards its full potential as a home for nature, wildlife, and your families. Thank you. And, and I nominated Kevin. 
Um, I spent time with both. Well, can I finish? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, I have a few comments. Today I'm starting my 60 years on the Kika board. I am honored to have been elected by this community for two consecutive terms. I have held many positions during my service, including vice chair, secretary, chair of the amenities task force, co-chair of the safety and enforcement task force, and a Kika board member representative on the joint ARB task force with Kevin. I have held two positions with the town of Kiowa, the building committee for the town hall and chair of the public works committee. I was instrumental along with Brad McElvain in getting the family pool heated and the main leisure trails widened and repaved. The amenities task force was successful in improving many of our amenities, including those at Rett's Bluff in the Eagle Point facility. The Safety and Enforcement Task Force made many improvements to our traffic calming, signage, and other enforcement efforts. I was the board member who brought to the Kika's board, Kika board its rights under the amended and restated development agreement, the ARDA, and was the moving force to reach an agreement with the partners to convey over 70 acres of Captain Sam's to Kika, insisting on a deed and escrow to assure that the actual conveyance would occur. I believe that my five years of service on the board have prepared me to be the best candidate to be elected chair by this board. I have served under four different chairs. I know what it takes to be a good chair. The Kika board has a lot, of, a lot on its plate this coming year. The board must have a chair that is experienced in all facets of the board responsibilities, especially with the many legal challenges coming before us. I believe that I have that experience and those qualifications. Thank you. Um, so I, I nominated Kevin. I've spent uh, two years on the board, and I nominated Kevin because I do think that we need to move away from the past. Um, and Kevin's got a perspective that is encompass broadly encompassing. Um, Kevin spent a lot of time understanding the rules, the regulations, understanding the ARDA. And I personally believe that Kevin's perspective is a, is a broader perspective and one that we need going forward. Um, I'm not gonna get into all the qualifications. I've certainly uh, served with David over the course of the last couple of years. I think Kevin is the right answer for us going forward. So I've nominated Kevin. I'd like to make a comment as well. Um, first of all, I'd like to commend Judy O'Brien for making what I think is a courageous um, uh, suggestion to, to, the, to this board. Um, I don't disagree with any of Sherry's comments relative to Dave or Dave's comments relative to Dave. Uh, I think Dave has been a very valuable contributor to the community and to the board that he has served on. Um, the reason that I will vote for Kevin is because I have done a lot of diligence, a lot of research, a lot of background, and my conclusion is uh, that Kevin would be a better executive as chairman of the board um, and uh, no other reason. And in particular, it, it frankly, I, I understand that this club membership is a thing. I am a club member, full disclosure, but I ran as a candidate to represent all of the members of Kika, not some of the members, all of the members. And while I understand that this is a thing, um, I, I hope that its relevant, relevance will recede in the future. So um, I, uh, there's, there, I have no issues whatsoever with Dave. I, my decision is based on my assessment of who would do a better job as the chair of this board. Thank you. I'll, I'll just add, um, I am running, and um, I pledge that um, if elected, I'm going to push pretty hard, as hard as I can for the next year, to do the best I can for all 4,000 plus members of our community, because I think that's the job of the chair, and that's what I'll pledge to do. Any more comments? Uh, time to vote. Those voting for Kevin. Okay. That's, yeah, I just want to make sure that the record shows who's voting. Uh, all voting for uh, me. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, Kevin has received the majority of the votes. May I have a motion to accept the majority vote? Moved. Second. Do we want to take up Judy's point? Sorry? Do we want to take up Judy's point, which I think was an interesting oh, one? Yes. Yeah, I think. How I think, would we, how would I, we I do think that? Per David explained it, I think I, I take over the next three votes. Okay. And so, and so my first question would be, does anyone who um, voted for David want to uh, uh, ask for a second vote, I think is the way it works per Robert's Rules of Order. And only, as I understand it, only someone who voted uh, you know, in, the, in the minority can ask that the vote, vote be reconsidered. David or, or um, Sherry, would either one of you want the vote to be reconsidered? Uh, I think the vote stands as it is. I agree. Okay. So... Um, so do we have a, uh, a motion to receive the majority of the votes? So moved. Second. Anyone? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, you take over. Okay. So um, next we'd move to vice chair, and I think it's um, the same process. Uh, would anyone like to nominate themselves or someone else for vice chair? I'll nominate Sherry Gallagher. Uh, the reason for nominating Sherry is she served on the amenities committee with me. She attends most of the meetings, if not all of the meetings. She's very active here on the island. And uh, I think she has a, a lot of experience in what goes on on the board and what goes on on the island. And I think, uh, I, I think she's the right person uh, for this position. Um, I myself will nominate Dwight Williams. Um, I think a couple reasons. Uh, one, I was very impressed with his background. I think the, the membership was impressed with his background um, uh, and uh, he, he received uh, quite a number of votes. I think he's got a um, something that are two things that I think we've ignored in the past, which is enforcement and security and some things that are coming up, I think are gonna be a bigger deal next year. And also um, emergency preparedness. I have not heard that word discussed or very rarely discussed on our board over the last 12 months. And I think it should be something that we should be putting more time into, more things about planning and looking forward. And I think uh, um, Dwight is uh, in a great position to do both of those. Anyone else wanna make a comment? I'd like to say something. Thanks, David, for your nomination. Kevin, I just wanted to make clear that my vote for Dave was not a vote against you. Okay. Um, all of us up here um, have the same overall goals. Uh, we want to protect Kiowa, and we want to make it the best place for our property owners, all of you. And we are going to work together, everybody up here will work together toward those goals. I'll be a cooperative colleague with you and everybody else. Um, I'm a devoted listener and a curious learner, and I plan to do all of those things. I am an attorney, and I've, got a, I've been a professional mediator for many years in my professional life. And I love a good debate, but I was born without a temper. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna see one. Um, when, you're, when you're gonna be working to improve Kiowa and the best interests of the member, I'll be by your side the entire time. I can be helpful by gathering consensus among our members. I'm involved in a lot of aspects of Kiowa life. I'm not a member of the club, but I have many friends who are. And in my dealings with them, I find that we have many more similarities than we have differences. And we're much more alike than, than we like to think we are. Club affiliation shouldn't be a factor in any decision that we make as a board, and I won't let it be one or in any of our discussions. We're all members of, of one very special club, and that's the Kiowa Club. So thank here, you. Here, here. <laughs> any other comments? All right, should we vote? I think uh, Sherry was nominated first, so uh, all those in favor of Sherry? Three, uh, uh, three I believe. And all those in favor of Dwight? Okay, I believe Dwight has it. Um, I do not have it. Do I have to make a motion to accept the vote? Is that how we're working per Robert's oh. Rules? Yeah, so yes. I guess, um, yes. can yes. I ask for a motion to accept the vote? So moved. Second. All in favor? <clears throat> all right. Congratulations to Dwight, who will be our vice chair. Um, next, we'll move to treasurer. 
Would anyone like to nominate someone for treasurer? I would like to nominate Paul Hennessy. Okay. Second. Paul, um, uh, I will nominate Lisa Mascola. You sure? Uh, no, I was reading our bylaws, but um, would so, you like to nominate yeah. yourself as treasurer? I, I would. I would. I would like to continue in the role as treasurer. Okay. Anyone would anyone like to make a comment? Yes. Um, I'm happy to nominate Paul Hennessy. I've watched him in action in the Finance Committee, and the energy and passion he projects into that position demonstrate his expertise and intelligence. Paul has taken the time to tutor me in the complex Kika financial issues, especially our reserve policy, and anyone that can make me understand that deserves my respect and my nomination. I think you'd be great at the job. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> Uh, um, I would like also to make a comment. Please. Um, uh, thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, now that I've explained the reserve policy, you're gonna <laughs> I'm going to have to count on you <laughs> for your support. Um, I'm happy to, to support Lisa. Um, she's doing a good job. Uh, we have an excellent committee. Um, they're, they've, done, they've done nice work. And... Um, uh, and frankly, um, it, 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 it's something uh, and a responsibility that would be a, represent a change for me would be my preference to be to be candid. So I'm I'm happy to support Lisa. Thank you, Paul. With that endorsement, was it, does anyone else want to make a comment on this position? All right. I think then um, sh uh, should we take a vote? I think Paul was in. Uh, Paul was first, and Lisa was second. So. All those in favor of Paul? Two? All those in favor of Lisa? Five? Um, can I have a motion to accept the vote? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So um, congratulations to Lisa. Um, our, our final uh, position is secretary. Uh, would someone like to nominate someone for secretary? I will happily step forward and um, actually uh, nominate Paul. Um, I'll make, then I'll save my comment. Anyone else? No one else? Well, uh, to make a comment? To make, no, to make a nomination. Oh, sorry. Then please make your comment. I, I, I nominate Paul. You nominate Paul. So we have, we have Paul's been nominated twice. I don't hear anyone else. Paul, <laughs> would you like to make your comment? OK, I, my, my only comment is I'm happy to do it so long as Ellen Festa renews her contract. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that is Paul Hennessy with stipulation. <laughs> um, uh, all those in favor of Paul, say aye. 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 Anyone against? Um, it's I, unanimous. It is. Congratulations. We have a 7 0. Can I have a, um, a motion to accept the vote? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor of accepting the vote? Aye. All right. I think, uh, congratulations to Paul. I think we have four officers for this upcoming year. <clears throat> Um, I, I think I will um, move us. We have one order of business today, and then we'll take member comments. Um, and this is the uh, uh, passing of the ARB resolution. Um, this is something that I put forward. Um, it's meant to, it's, it's been out there in the public, and I'm going to suggest uh, two changes or three changes. But this was really um, proposed um, to reach two goals. Uh, one is to mandate uh, the ARB Joint Task Force to continue to move forward to work with the town. I think that um, we've had um, good discussions with the partners um, in the fact that Jordan came out at a town hall meeting and said that he was prepared to work with us to transition. So we now need a team to work with him on that transition. And the second is I thought it was important that we accept and memorialize the phase two recommendations. The task force worked really hard. I didn't, everyone, we didn't get a lot of bad feedback on it, but I thought it's important that we have a resolution that says the key board has read it, we accept it, and we're going to put these things into order. Um, I have uh, really two changes. In the, first, in the second whereas, whereas the Kika board wishes to pursue a transition, I said of all facets of architectural review, I'm going to scratch all facets of because it's a little bit unclear exactly um, if there are retained rights or how those move over from um, a, uh, the, uh, the current ARB, so we're going to leave that a little bit broader. 
And the second was, this is really my error. I didn't mean to infer that Ed Monahan doesn't do a spectacular job advocating for members, but I was thinking about the future. In the first bullet point under number two, we say the current, and I'm proposing that we add, and any future member of the ARB appointed by Kika should advocate on behalf of Kika members and facilitate a strong user experience for Kika members with the ARB. So I, um, I missed this before. In the uh, point one, last sentence, any change in composition to the joint task force must be reviewed and approved by the Kika board. Can we review and approve the TOKI representative? No, no, but I think. Um, so that's sort of unclear. That no, was, I guess any change in the, I, uh, then why don't we add any change in the Kika appointed members? Yeah. Because it makes it sound like yeah. we have to approve TOKI change. No, nope, that's absolutely <laughs> correct. Okay, I missed that before, sorry. Um, does anyone else have comments on it? Are we ready to take it to a vote? We got to get, get a motion. Would someone like the motion? I, I so, so moved. Second. We can have discussion. Oh yeah, good point. Um, I thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm new at this. Um, we'll take the motion and then we'll have discussion. So is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Uh, I have a few comments. One of the things we have to remember, and I know. The community, I think, really wants this to get accomplished, that Kika gets control of the AIB. The, there's two ways we can do it. We can negotiate with the partners and have a nice, calm, hopefully professional transition over a period of time. It can't be done overnight. We would have to hire staff. It's not, I want to be clear, it's not like we're going to get the existing AIB under Kika. We're going to have to form a new ARB with our own staff and a new system. The nuclear option is to go with the general covenant change. As Kevin explained earlier, that is a very onerous task. We'll never go in that direction. So we're going to have to work with the partners to transition. So far, there's been movement. The timeline I heard at a meeting was three to five years. I think that's totally unacceptable. I think we have to figure out a way somehow to get it done quicker than that. And, and my hope would be no later than the end of 25. Uh, and those are my comments. Well said. Anyone else have a comment? Um, are we ready to vote? All those in favor of uh, approving this resolution? Aye? Aye. 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 Any nays? Do we have an abstention? No, I voted in favor. Okay, I just want to make sure. Thank you. Um, I think that wraps up the business portion, so we move to member comments. Are there any, uh, we'll start in the room, are there anyone that like? Uh, I had a comment. Oh, sorry. Um, so as the new board secretary, um, if you haven't already submitted your conflict of interest forms, you must do so quickly. Monday. I have, I brought mine with me, if anyone would like to read it. Thank you. Anyone else on the board? Anyone uh, here in the room like to make a comment? Do we have anyone online, Ellen? We, we have no additional comments. Um, I thank everyone for coming and um, look, look forward to meeting everyone that we haven't met yet and working with you in the upcoming year. Do you like and a PSA about this afternoon? PSA. Uh, one PSA. Yeah, I just wanted to um, reiterate two points. One. Um, we will get a note out tomorrow in the weekly or separately? Weekly. We will get a note out tomorrow in the weekly with respect to the Finance Committee soliciting um, three additional members. My expectation is the meeting of the next Finance Committee is scheduled for April. Okay. Um, so it will be sometime in April. So, so my expectation is we're going to, um, if you're interested, please submit an application. It will be uh, obvious through the weekly. We're going to move relatively rapidly because I would like to get the three new members um, seated in time for the April Finance Committee meeting. It's a, it's a big agenda um, for finance over the course of this year. And then the other PSA I would make is for, you should probably make it, for this afternoon's festivities. Yes, 3 o'clock in this room, we're going to have a uh, forum. We'll, we'll spend an hour with our two candidates for mayor and then an hour with our two <laughs> candidates for <laughs> Uh, miss, uh, no, I, I thought I missed something. Uh, town Council, so that'll run from approximately 3 to 5 o'clock. Um, we'd love to have everyone join, but it'll also be taped and be available online as well. And congratulations to all of our new officers. I look forward to working and with you all. And new board members. Congratulations. Do we have a <laughs>
Do we, I didn't say it. Uh, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second? Second. Second. I think we're done. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.